and welcome to Nick Rip. My name is Cody and welcome to the 2021 update on how to do my amigurumi whale pattern. I have a couple other tutorials on how to make my amigurumi whale, but I wanted to do uh, an update for 2021 for a couple of reasons. One is I have been changing how I do my increasing on my whale. Two, I wanted to show how to do the tail with my updated version basically. And three, I am going to be doing a mirrored version of this tutorial so if my crochet hook is not currently in the hand that you crochet with then you can go down in the description down below and the alternate video will be there i have a new software that allows me to mirror the video so if you are interested in that and you're left-handed or right-handed go ahead and pop down there and go to the one that is for your uh handedness basically so for this tutorial, I'm going to be using some worsted weight yarn. I am going to be using, I love this yarn, which is a Hobby Lobby brand. I am gonna be using the metallic colors. So this one in white will be for the belly. And for the top, I'm gonna to be using, I love this yarn metallic in the aqua sparkle. This one's white and this one's aqua sparkle. I really like how soft these are. The samples that I have all done here are done with the I Love This uh, Cotton, which is a cotton version of this. I believe this one is also a Hobby Lobby yarn, but it is not I Love This Cotton. I think it's like Crafter's Corner or something like that. I'm not 100% sure, but you can use any worsted weight yarn to do this. You will also need a crochet hook. I'm using a size D3 or 3.25 millimeter. This is my Furls crochet hook. I'm an affiliate with them, but I've been using their hooks long before I became an affiliate. If you're interested in getting this crochet hook, you can get that down below. But really any crochet hook, as long as it's a small enough crochet hook that you're comfortable with using for Amigurumi will work just fine. So if you have one that's a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, as long as you're happy with how your stitches look for your Amigurumi, it will be fine. You will work just fine with that. Um, I'm also going to be using some 12 to 15 millimeter eyes. The bigger the eyes, the more kind of cute face look you get for them. So I'm using a, I don't remember if these are 12s or 15s, but either one will work. I've also used smaller eyes and it just makes them look a bit more beady. Let me see if I can find one right here. Like that right there was my little manta ray that I made back in the day. Uh, it's an alternate version of this. Obviously I just went around for a couple less and that's why I made the eyes beadier. But that's what you end up getting is if you use these, which I believe these were like a six millimeter. They're super tiny. They're, they're pinpoint four or six, something like that. I like using bigger eyes, but I would not for this size go bigger than a 15, honestly, because if you get up to like 20 to 30 millimeter, that's what I use for the mama whale. I do have alternate sizes for these. I already have the mama whale, which again, all of these will be linked down below, uh, but I'm also gonna be coming out uh, in my next tutorial how to do the bigger brother. So it's like a, a an amigurumi whale that is between the mama and the baby size, which I think is a lot of fun. So keep tuned for that. So you need your safety eyes, your D3 hook. You're also going to need some stuffing. Where did I just put it? Right here. Get a pound bag and you'll be able to make a whole army of whales like this. And I think that would be super cute. But a pound is more than enough to make a bunch of these. You're also going to need a darning needle. All right, I'm gonna post up the pattern and let's get started. All right, so this is future editing Cody and I forgot to mention that there is a printable PDF for this pattern on my Ravelry, so you can go over there. It's also on Lovecrafts and on Kindle, so if you wanna get it over there, you can. Uh, this is a cute little PDF that you can download which has the uh, things that you'll need, skill level, charts, and all that stuff. You can also just straight up screenshot this if you would like, but I also have an easy, even more screenshotable version that will be popping up in just a minute for this pattern. This also includes the instructions for the shark tail, shark fin, as well as the orca circle version that I also have tutorials for on my channel. So if that's something that you're interested in, go ahead and pop over to Ravelry and make sure you get this within the first week of me uploading uh, so you can get this PDF. All right, so for this pattern, you're going to want to be comfortable with doing a couple things first. You're going to want to be comfortable with chaining, single crocheting, 
working in the round. I'm going to show you how I do all of these things, but these are general terms that you're going to want to be comfortable with. For the tail, you're also going to want to know how to do a half double crochet and how to do a double crochet. Again, I will show how to do that, but you will probably want to be comfortable with these. I have a crochet 101 playlist, which I, again, I will link all of these things down in the description if you have any questions on any of them. But generally, you're going to want to be comfortable with making uh, a magic ring. I'll show you how I do my alternate version of making a ring and uh, also decreasing and increasing. So I will show how I do all these very quickly in this video, but generally you're going to want to be comfortable with this. I just created a slip knot and for my magic ring, I can't make a normal magic ring to save my life. So I generally just do a chain two. So one and two. And then I skip this second chain right here and I go back into my first. And for this first round, this counts as our first round, we're going to put six single crochet. You'll also notice that I wrap from left to right instead of right to left. Either one will work. However, I do the X method of single crocheting, which makes an X looking stitch instead of a Y looking stitch. And that's why I do that. Because I make my stitches this way, I find that the stuffing shows a little bit less, which is why I pull from left to right instead. If you want me to do a full video on that later, I can. But for right now, I basically just left pull, left pull um, for the first six stitches. I'm gonna do this for all of them and I'll show you what that looks like. One, two, three, four, five, oops, I dropped it, and six. So your hole's gonna end up really big right there. That's fine, just pull on your tail and that will close right up. Another thing that I do with my amigurumi is I work through the front loop only. So you see your stitch has kind of a V formation. You have this loop right here, and then you have this loop back here. So right there. That is your back loop. I work through the front loop only. If you work through both of your loops, that will be fine, but I generally think that it makes my stitches, again, look a bit more bubbly when I do it this way. So for these now six stitches, we're going to put an increase inside every single one of these stitches. So we're gonna be going from six stitches up to 12 stitches. This is now round two. So put one, inside that first stitch, go back inside that first stitch and place another stitch. So we now have two stitches within that one stitch. Another thing that a lot of people have been telling me about lately is if you have noticed that your increases tend to have a lot of holes in them, what you can do for increasing instead is you go through your front loop like you would normally and do your first stitch like so, but put your crochet hook into both loops on the second part of that same stitch and increase that way and that makes it so that you have a nice hidden increase right there. I'll show that one more time. So go through the front loop only on your second stitch for your increase. So one, go back inside that same stitch and then go under both and that makes it so that your holes are less obvious when it comes to your increases. I like how that looks, so I'm gonna do that from, for all of my increases the entire way. If you don't wanna do it that way and you just wanna do both, that's fine, but I like how this looks a bit better and it also tends to make things look a bit more round, I've noticed. It kinda of pulls it in a bit more. So I'll show again on my next one. So this one is just through the front loop, then I go through both loops, for my increase stitches only, mind you. And then I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna go through the front loop only for my fifth stitch. Going back inside that fifth stitch, but through both loops. And then this is our sixth stitch, so this is our final one, one. Go through both loops of that same stitch, two. So now we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12 stitches. And that is the end of row two. We're now we're going to be going from 12 stitches up to 18 stitches. Every time we increase, we're going to increase six stitches every single round until we get to 30 stitches all the way around. So how I do that is basically we're going to be adding a space between each of our increases every time we increase. So next up, we are going to actually put our tail through this last stitch so that we know where we last stopped and that way I can keep track of my stitches. But here, I'm gonna pull on that a little bit more so that is nice and 
hidden right there. We're going to single crochet one, increase, single crochet one, increase every single time until we get all the way down to the end. So we're gonna be doing that six times basically. I'm gonna go through the front loop and single crochet my one. Now we're on our next stitch, which we increase. So single crochet that one right there and then go back inside that same stitch through both loops and pull that through. Single crochet one. Go into the next stitch, single crochet one, and then go through both loops and add your increase. Single crochet one. Go into the next one. Both loops. Increase. One. Next stitch, front loop only. And increase through both loops. One. Next stitch. Single crochet one. Increase through both loops. Single crochet one. Go into the next stitch. This is our final increase. And go through both loops like so. We're then gonna take our tail and pull it out. I did a little too close, so now I have to take it and pull it out here. I'm gonna move my tail forward so that I can keep track of where I am and where the start of my round is. And now we are on round four. And here I'm going to do something a little funky. We are going to stagger our increase. This adds to the roundness of our work and I like how this looks a lot better. Okay, so what I would usually do is stack my increases, which makes it so that all of my increases are all stacked on top of each other. However, when you stagger your increases, and that is part of my Crochet 101 playlist, so if you're interested in knowing more about this for going further out, you can do that. But for this, we're going to actually make it so that our increase is offset from where it would line up right here. So that is an increase right there. So we just did single crochet one increase. So now what we would have done is single crochet two increase, but that would make it so that the increases line up on top of each other. And I don't want that to happen. I find that it looks rounder when you kind of offset them a little bit. So instead of single crocheting two and increasing, we're gonna split the difference. We're going to single crochet one, increase, and then single crochet one. Let's do that again, single crochet one, increase, single crochet one. So now you will see that there are still two single crochets between our increases. It's just not lined up and it makes it look a little less hexagonal because when you're just doing six increases, you're gonna end up with something that looks like it has six sides, like a hexagon, but we want this to look round. So when you offset it, it makes it look a little less like a hexagon. So single crochet one, increase, single crochet one, single crochet one, increase, single crochet one, single crochet one, increase, Single crochet one. And I believe this is our last one. That's so single crochet one. Increase. And single crochet one. I'm going to move forward our tail. And we only do our staggering when we have an even number of stitches between our increases. So now what we're going to do is single crochet three and increase all the way around. And that will be our last increase round. We are currently at 24 stitches and we're gonna be going up to our final 30 stitches for our work. So one, two, three, four, and we're gonna increase that stitch going through both the loops like so. One, two, three, four and increase that stitch one two three four 
and increase. One, two, three, four, and increase. One, two, three, four, and increase. That was our fifth increase. And now we're on our last repetition. One, two, three, four, and increase. Going through both loops just to bring it nice and tight together. Now you can see that our circle is much more round looking than in our previous videos and our previous tutorials of this, and that there's less holes, which you want with your emigrami. You do not want the stitches to be wide apart so you can see the stuffing on the inside. I'm gonna move my tail forward just now. And now for the next four rounds, we're going to just single crochet around and maintain those 30 stitches. I love how circular this looks and how round it is. It's much more round than a previous one. Let me see if I can find one that looks that I've done previously. To give you an idea, I have these ones for a future video where I want to describe this a bit more in detail. This is one that I did where I did not stagger my increases and you can see the lines going that way and this looks much more round and you end up with a much more round final product. Same thing with this. If you don't do through the second both loops, you end up with one that is a little bit bigger but you also end up with one that has, you can see way more through it than you can through that. I hope that makes sense. This one's not staggered. This one is staggered, but this is the one where you go through uh, the second loop instead of just going through both the front loops, basically. I hope that makes sense. So now we're just going to single crochet around for four rounds, and then I'm gonna show you how we do the little tail and how we attach our yarn for the belly. Be right back. All right, so I've gone around for my four rounds, six, seven, eight, and nine. And technically in my pattern, I write this as row 10 because I didn't really know how to phrase it other than that. Um, this is the tail portion essentially. And I stop one stitch short of row nine. And now I'm going to chain five. I'm one stitch short of the, the last stitch of my final uh, stitch of row nine. And I'm going to chain five. So one, two, three, four, and five. We're going to skip over these two chains. I'm going to wrap my yarn and do a double crochet into the third stitch from my hook. And I'm just gonna double crochet by going through two loops and then two loops again. Now we have two of our chains remaining in our next chain right after that one. So the second one that we chained, but it's the fourth one from our hook. I hope that makes sense. We're going to do a half double crochet in which we don't go through both loops. Uh, we go through all three loops at once. And then we do a single crochet in our remaining chain. Now here, I'm going to go into the first stitch of what will be row 10. We're going to slip stitch we're going to do another chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. Try to make them as evenly tensioned as you did on your other tail fin. And we're gonna do the exact same thing where we skip these first two, go into the third with a double crochet. One, two, and one, two. Go into the fourth stitch with a half double crochet going through all three stitches and then on that remaining stitch we're going to do a single crochet now I'm going to pull my yarn just a little bit there you go and we're gonna go into the second stitch of row 10 and we're going to slip stitch off here I'm going to actually cut my tail right like so and pull it like that so here i like to actually take my tail and i like to pull it through to the other side just to kind of make it look a bit more smooth right there i'm gonna pull that i'm also gonna pull my other tail like so and i just kind of let these guys exist inside of my little whale buddy body and here is where i like to do my eyes 
my eyes, I actually do by evenly spacing them from my tail. That way my face is even. And the way that I do that is I like to count eight stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And on that ninth stitch, right above, right there, I'm going to put my eyeball in and I'm gonna make sure that it's kind of like so. So it's basically, I do eight and then right above the ninth stitch from my tail on either side, that's where I put my eyeballs. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then this ninth stitch right here, I go in right above, make sure that it's right above. And if you're not happy with how close or how far apart your eyes are, you can always adjust things how you want them. However, I like the eyes being like that. So I'm going to put my little backers on. This one's gonna be uh, a little bit more <laughs> farsighted than the other ones. So depending on how close you want them, just try to make it so it's an even number of stitches from your tail. I think that will be super cute anyway. This yarn is a bit more stretchy than the cotton yarn. So this one's gonna end up being a slightly larger whale. Next, we're going to work on making the belly and closing him up. To do this, we're going to grab our white yarn. And how I like to do this, it's a little messy, <laughs> if I'm gonna be quite honest. I like to pick up stitches from underneath the tail so that I can make sure to pick up all 30 of these stitches. And remember earlier when I talked about going through front loop only and back loop only? This is the round that I'm actually gonna be going through the back loop only. So this is the front loop again. We're going to be going through this back loop here and dropping our front loop, which creates this line along our belly to our tummy, basically. I like how this looks. If you don't like how it looks, you can change it, but that's generally what I do. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do behind each fin. I'm gonna pick up the back loop that we did not go through when we did our tail. So I'm going to actually just take my yarn, hold it to the back, but on the right of my hook and pull that through, do a chain. We're going to skip that chain and not treat it like it's a stitch. I'm gonna go back in, taking my tail right there and keeping it as if it is a piece of our stitching right there. I'm gonna work it into the yarn basically. And I'm gonna do a little single crochet. We're gonna do the same thing, going through the back of our tail loop right there and I'm going to hold that there. I'm only gonna do that for these two stitches just to kind of get it so that it's cemented and I'm gonna hold the back of that yarn to the back there. And now we have two single crochet and now for the rest of these, for the rest of the 28, we're gonna go through the back loops only of our work. And we're, our goal is to get this to be 30 stitches. I may have to fudge things as soon as I get over there by single crocheting two together. That's usually what I wind up having to do, but that's neither here nor there. You want 30 stitches, essentially. You want to pick up the 30 stitches that you dropped off before. However, you can do that. I'm going to fast forward uh, while I do this. So you can see that I've dropped off all of my little front loops there. I'm gonna count how many stitches I have because that's the only way I can keep track of these things. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm going to actually pick up this one, 29 and 30. And what I like to do here is I'm actually gonna pick up this little stitch here, but I'm gonna go through the front loop of this stitch and treat it all as if it is one. That way it all kind of pulls down into just one little loop here, basically. It makes it so that there isn't a giant hole right there. So new year now on the first stitch of our row 12. This is row 11, there you go. I had to keep track in my head. I'm like, what row are we on? Um, I'll be posting little things here that you can see which row it is. Uh, we're going to start decreasing now. And so for here, we're gonna do the exact inverse of what we did for our increasing. So instead of single crocheting three and increasing, we're going to be single crochet three decrease because we're gonna to try to minimize from those 30 stitches down to 24. And we have to evenly do that amongst six repetitions, basically. So we have one, go into the next one, two, go into the next one, three, and then 
four and five, these two stitches are the ones that we want to go together. You can do this one of two ways. One, you can just skip your fourth stitch and go into your fifth, and that will decrease technically. However, I like to do what I call an invisible decrease. And the way that I do that is I go through the front loop of my fourth stitch, and then I go back in and go back under the fifth stitch as well. So now I have two loops, and then I single crochet them together as if they are one stitch. I'll show that again on my next repetition. One, two, three, four, and five together. Single crochet your loop through both of them and then put them together. One, two, three, four, and five together, both through the front loop only. One, two, three, four, and five together. One, two, three, three, there we go. Four and five together. And then our last repetition should be right this one. One, two, three, four, pull my tail a little bit there. Four and five together. And decrease. So now we've got a lot of strings going on on the inside, but it's okay. We should have 24 stitches on our work. I like to always double check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 1, 2, 3, 4. We have 24 stitches. I am not beyond having to fudge my numbers to make sure that I get it right. If you're at 23 or you're at 25, do what you need to do to increase or decrease or just minimize how much you have to work around but here I am going to also stagger my decreases before we did single crochet one increase single crochet one to get to the size between here so here we're going to single crochet one decrease single crochet one we're going from 24 down to 18 stitches so we're going to again stagger it it helps hide your decreases a little bit more it's a fairly invisible decrease decrease right here but I think that it still makes it look a bit more round. And then single crochet one. Single crochet one. Decrease two together. Single crochet one. Single crochet one. Decrease two together. Single crochet one. Single crochet one. Put two together. Single crochet one, single, three. single crochet one, decrease, single crochet one, and you should have one more decrease repetition. So one, decrease, single crochet one. Here's where I like to do my stuffing because if I do any more decreases from here, I am not going to be able to stuff the body. So I'll show you what I do for uh, the rest of the decreases once I have his little body stuffed and he'll look a little bit more like a whale then. I'll be right back as soon as I get this to the point where I am happy with his stuffing. All right, so when you're at the bottom of your whale, you're kind of doing two things at the same time. You're trying to decrease while also trying to do your stuffing. So what I'm going to do here is we have 18 stitches left and I can only stuff so much without it coming out and me trying to also single crochet around it. So I find that it's easiest to try to stuff as much as I can, but not stuff a lot, a lot. I hope that makes sense. Like It's kind of just like a balancing act. So here we are 18 stitches and we want to get down to 12. And the way that I do that is we're going to again do the inverse. So we're single crocheting one and instead of increasing, we're going to decrease these two stitches together. And we're gonna do that six times. So again, single crochet one and decrease all the way around. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. All right, so now we only have 12 stitches left. And now that I've done that, you can see that I can stuff a bunch more. So I'm actually going to stuff this a bit more. Just, you don't wanna overstuff, but you also don't wanna understuff. 
which is a, again, <laughs> very fun balancing act. I do not particularly care for stuffing my amigurumi. I find that stuffing it can make or break your, how your piece looks. And honestly, I'm terrible at it. So I have ruined many an amigurumi because I am not actually very good at stuffing them. I, I, I don't know if I'm alone in that or if I'm just weird, but I am terrible at stuffing it. Crocheting stitches, it's an exact art. I know exactly how I can make uh, a stitch, but when it comes to stuffing, I just can't wrap my brain around what exactly, how much stuffing I need in a particular area, and it drives me crazy. So all right, we're actually, I think we're there. What I like to do when I get to the end is I kind of like, roll it underneath the stitches. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how that looks. You just need to know when to stop. And apparently this is not it. Hold on. E. I try to roll it underneath like so. All right, so we're on our last row. And what we're going to do for this is we're going to decrease every single stitch. We're going to be going from 12 stitches down to six. And I know that still means that there's six stitches left, but I'll show you how I close off my amigurumi. So every single one of these stitches, we are going to decrease every single stitch. One, two. One, two. There we go. One, two. Try to keep your tension a bit more firm during this time. I find that I tend to loosen it up a little bit and it looks weird. And one, two. I think that is all of them. So we should have one, two, three, four, five, six stitches left. Now here, I'm going to actually pull that out a little bit. I'm gonna cut a decently long tail. And this is where our darning needle actually comes in. We're gonna pull that all the way through, take our darning needle, and I'm going to actually work this through every single stitch. We're gonna go from the outside in on all of our stitches. So the first one, outside in, like so. Go to the second stitch, outside and in. Don't pull yet. Outside, going inward. Try to keep the fluff as inside as you can. Outside in on the fifth one. No, that's the third one. Not sure exactly which stitch I'm on. I know when I'm done. Outward in, in, and that's our last stitch. Pull that. Then it's easiest to try to take your needle and go through the hole as it's still open and then pull it through to the side adjacent from it. Pull it and then tug and it will close up your hole and it's completely hidden. You cannot see your final stitches and I love how this turned out. All right. So now that your base whale is done, you're gonna kind of squish them around. I'm gonna take my tail and go in another direction with it just because I can. This tends to, if you get it going in a different direction, it will keep it from squirreling away from you, basically. And now I'm gonna cut that tail and most of my other tails are just still hidden on the inside of my whale. And now the only thing we have left are those cute little fins and I'm gonna show you how I do those. All right, so for the fins, we're gonna go back to our main yarn. So whatever you used for your top, or honestly, whatever color you would like it to be. And what I like to do is I'm gonna put my hook through the center stitch between our eyes and between our tail. And here, I'm going to create a decently long tail, wherever my main tail is, there it is, of about six to eight inches, depending. I'm gonna use this for sewing later, which is why I leave a nice long tail. And I'm gonna just kind of pull it to the back of my work and then I'm going to take my yarn and pull that through that stitch that is looped up from our back loop only. We're going to chain one and then I'm going to single crochet three inside that same stitch, that back loop that I went through. One, two, three. And then I'm going to just slip stitch off. And I'm going to repeat that for the other side. So here I'm going to cut my tail, pull that all the way through. We're going to take our darning needle and I'm going to just fish that through my little whale body. Like so. I try to go as close as I can to the bottom right there and hold. 
and pull that through. And then I'm gonna take my little thing and go in another direction. I always like to go in opposite directions, that way it's kind of less likely to come out, I find. I'm gonna do the same thing with the other side and I'm going to repeat the same process for my other fin. Pull that through and there you go, you have a little fin. If you wanna make it a little bit bigger, you can also single crochet for more, but you will end up with a small little hole in the center depending on how many times you go around with a single crochet. It can make it a little bit more blown out. So I'm gonna finish my other fin and then have some closing thoughts. So that's pretty much it. Let me know what you think of my little amigurumi whale. I think he's super duper cute. I'm gonna be doing a bunch more tutorials. I might even do one of this cute little manta ray. I have not decided yet. Let me know what you would like to see in the future for some amigurumi tutorials. Post them down in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video. And before we go, I would like to give a shout out to our Patreon supporters. Without your support, we wouldn't be able to grow as a channel. So thank you for your generous pledges. If you're interested in supporting our channel, go to Patreon patreon.com slash knit and you can see the different rewards that we offer our patreons there patreon supporters there free patterns early access to tutorials and a bunch more thanks again for watching and be sure to like and subscribe and hit the little bell before you leave if you want to see more videos like this and let me know what you guys think of the left hand version versus the right hand version and whether or not you guys like that format all right until next time bye